Welcome back to Two Rail Fans. We're going to be working on some more of the steps in our Athern Blue Box diesel upgrade today. To start this process, I'm going to get the cover off of the worm gear. I'm going to be installing new drive shafts on here today. So I already had these off the frame. I will say that I had recently lubricated this, this whole thing the other day, waiting for these parts to come. So everything inside here should be clean and ready to go. So I'm going to be using a drive, drive shaft kit from A-Line. It's kind of a universal kit. I've used these to repair other engines before. The main issue is that the drive mechanism on the flywheels on this new Ather Genesis motor have a hex head on it, hex pattern. So it's a different shape that I need to fit in there. So just taking a look at the parts here. It was pretty difficult to get that off the worm gear. It was on there fairly tight, but of course you want it to be on there tightly because uh, that's the drive mechanism. So I ended up just gripping it with a pair of pliers on one side and twisting with an, another pair of pliers on the other side and it came off fairly easily. Of course, once that came off, putting a new one on there was fairly tight. So what I ended up doing is just taking a tiny bit of grease and putting it inside there to help me be able to press it on there. If you haven't ordered these A-line kits before, they're, they make a lot of things to, to help you uh, either rebuild or repair drive, drive mechanisms on engines. So yeah, just a tiny bit of grease here. It was still hard to get it on there, but I was able to get it on there successfully. Of course, we have to do this for both sides. All right, so we're good to go on that. The actual drive shaft then comes in two parts and they have different, uh, different heads you can put on the one end depending on what you're connecting to. But basically it is a dry, the drive shaft fits into the hex head on it. They do say in the instructions that you're supposed to glue it in place However, when I was going through, that was a very tight fit. So I, I didn't show that in the, the edited part of the video here, but I actually had to go through with an X-Acto knife and very carefully shave off uh, the plastic that was outside of the, the actual uh, connection there to make sure it was exactly the dimension. Otherwise, it would fit in a very snug fit. So I decided not to do that. So we got we got those uh, the drive shafts in. Now we're good to go on that. So the next thing we need to do, and I fit the drive obviously fit the drive shafts and put it in there, but I'm going to be soldering the 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 wires for the motor here. So starting out with some flux, a little wire here, and I'm going to solder this to the top of the trucks. And you'll notice there's a piece of metal that comes up on one side and hooks over. And this is going to connect on the opposite side, right to the piece of metal <clears throat> at the top of the trucks that are lying flat. So I tinned the wire. Because I basically, I didn't want to touch the soldering iron on the trucks for very long because there's plastic gears there, there's wheels. I didn't want to mess up any of that mechanism. So the goal was to be able to get it soldered as quickly as possible. So 
We're going to hold that wire now parallel to the the top of that that connector there the not the connector the the pickup and this is basically to replace the frame on these old Atherin engines i'm not positive about the new ones but they actually use the frame to conduct electricity of course the new motor does not have a pickup on the bottom of it like the old one did but they used to rely on that and we want a better connection so this will give us a better connection on on that side so we're going to do front and back so just give me a tiny bit of flux on there and want this to go as quickly as possible And that should probably do it. Yep, it's on there pretty good. So just get the other one done. Same thing, just preloading a very small. I didn't want to overdo the solder because you also don't want it to interfere with any of the, the wheel mechanisms there. So got that on nice and tight. All right, so we've got those back in wires are run. And now the next step is to connect those together and then connect the motor wire to it. We're going ahead and getting those all set up. I'm not sure if I showed it in the edited version, but I did tin those ends as well so that it could go a little more quickly. So I'm trying to be careful there. Get nervous uh, using the soldering iron around some of this electronic stuff. So you going to be, be careful and limit the exposure. And I think we got it. All right, so the next thing we got to do is the other motor wire. So this one, I'm going to strip a, a single wire here, and we're going to solder this to those metal brackets that run along the top of the trucks there. They used to be connected by a metal strip that ran across there and also made contact with the top of the, the old motor. So I'm stripping the ends of it, and I'm, I also stripped the middle a little bit. I'm going to tin these. I'm also going to get a little bit of solder on those, those metal brackets on, on top of the trucks. This is a little less nerve-wracking because you have a big surface to solder to on there. But this, this eliminates the need for that metal bar that runs across the top. And of course, you need you need that space anyway because now there's a circuit board up there, and eventually there will be a decoder on top of that. So now that everything's tin, we're going to go ahead and get that wire connected. Sometimes you need three hands for these projects, but it is not the time to ask a nine-year-old to help. He can help with a lot of things, but this is not one of those projects. All right, so I'm getting that connected now. Then I'm going to solder that other wire to the middle as well. So while the action's going on here, just want to remind you guys, this is not a financially reasonable project. This is an emotional project, sentimental. These are engines that I had since I was a kid and basically just trying to upgrade them, make them run as good as possible and get them DCC right well, 
get them fully DCC so we can run them on current layout. So a sentimental project, we'll say. This side took a little bit longer. I can't remember what happened, but eventually got everything soldered in place there. <clears throat> it's nice to see some of the old stuff removed from the engine that the old pickup mechanism uh, for the circuit to go across the top was kind of flimsy. This will give a much better connection. I'm not the best at soldering, so don't criticize my technique, but I did get the job done. Didn't melt any circuits while we were doing this. If you guys haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and support our channel. We appreciate it. All right, we'll get this other side. All right, and we just need to get that middle connected. And then we're going to run, I, instead of using the uh, shrink sleeves on here, I decided to use some of this polyimide tape or captain tape, as some people call it. The decoder we got, unfortunately, is not working. There's some kind of an error with it. And one of the reasons, or one of the ways we were able to determine that is the old battery test. This new Atherin Genesis motor is DCC ready, meaning it runs DC. But all you need to do right here is plug an 8-pin connector in. So I had actually bought that ESU Lock Sound 5 decoder specifically because it had one of the 8-pin plugs on it. Uh, so we're going to have to return that. So this project, is the last stage is probably going to be put on hold for a while until we get the new decoder. Obviously, I haven't bothered to tuck the wiring in and put it exactly where it needs to go. The main thing that we were trying to do before we moved on to the next steps was simply to test it out. So we need to wait for the replacement decoder. Uh, we do have the LED lights we're going to be putting in. I also have a sugar cube speaker we're going to be putting in here. So those things will all have to wait, but David's going to demo. I'm sure most of you guys know how to do this test. I'm going to step out of frame here for a second, and he's going to turn around, and I want you to show them how to do the old battery test to see if, if the motor works. Turn it the other way. Anyway, that's as far as we got in this project. At least we did make some progress. At least we know the motor runs. Drive shafts are in. Till next time. Signing off.